Sorry, me and Earl are trying to get caught up on our golf stories. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today is June 13th. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to the planning and zoning meeting for the city of Smyrna. Um, this, uh, this meeting is called order at 6.04 p.m. Uh, at this time, we'd like to ask if you would turn off your electronic devices as it tends to interfere with our recording equipment. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, this meeting is conducted much like a council meeting. As such, each application will include a presentation from city staff, followed by a question and answer session between staff and the board. Following staff's presentation, we'll have the applicant present their application and answer any questions from the board. Once all the questions have been satisfied, we'll have an opportunity for anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to the application. Uh, we ask you to come forward one at a time, uh, state your name and address for the record, sign the sign-in sheet at the podium, and uh, please direct all your comments to the board. All right, the first couple items on our agenda, we're going to breeze right through and, and get them uh, tabled to a future meeting. So um, let's get started with that. Um, that first item on our agenda is, I'm looking at the wrong minutes, my bad is Z16-002. Uh, it's rezoning from GC to RTD conditional for the construction of 72 townhome units. It's a 7.25 acre tract in land lot 606. Uh, this is 4710, 30, 50, 60, 70, and 80, 4780 Camp Highland Road. Prime Interest Incorporated is the applicant. And this request was tabled from the March 14th, 2016 planning and zoning meeting at the request of the applicant to the April 11th meeting. Uh, it will be tabled tonight to the July 11, 2016 meeting uh, at the request of the applicant. Can we get a uh, motion, please? I have a motion, Mr. Monroe, to table. I have a second, Ms. Harrington. Uh, all in favor, please vote. Yay, nay, or abstain. Gotcha. And Ms. Harrington, there we go. All right, so it is approved 7-0 and tabled to the July 11th meeting. All right, the next item on our agenda is uh, Zoning request Z15-003. This is rezoning of subject property from R15 to RAD conditional for the development of two single family homes. This is a 1.31 acres at a land lot 592. This is 1514 Hawthorne Avenue. Uh, Tully and Tully Incorporated is the applicant. This zoning uh, request will be tabled to the July 11, 2016 Planning and Zoning Board meeting at the request of staff. Uh, I need to get a motion to table. A motion, Ms. Lightfoot. A second, Mr. Roberts. Uh, all in favor? It is approved 7-0. All right. Um, the next item on our agenda is the zoning request Z16-007. This is a rezoning from LC and GC to MU conditional for the development of a new restaurant. This is a 0 .142 acres at land lot 452. This is Concord Road and Hollis Street. Uh, Smyrna Restaurant Concepts LLC is the applicant. Mr. Martin, the background, please. Seven, it is, uh, it'll be heard tonight and then you guys will make an action and it'll move to mayor and council on July 18th. Uh, this property is located at the intersection of Concord and Hollis Street on the north side of Concord. Um, it's approximately one tenth of an acre and it is currently vacant and the applicant is proposing to build a 3,500 square foot uh, restaurant. The subject property has a current zoning classification of limited commercial and general commercial, and the applicant is requesting to rezone the property to mixed use conditional. Our future development map has the property classified as um, medium density residential, which is up to six units per acre. 
uh, as part of this request, we'll be requesting a, a land use change from medium density residential to uh, mixed use. If you all remember um, about a year and a half ago, uh, the city commissioned Sizemore Group to uh, do a land use study along the uh, Concord Road uh, corridor for all the remnant property that the city had purchased during the Concord Road improvement project. And uh, they studied what, they, what the plans were to what type of land uses and plans they could do with this property. Um, during that study, we came up with three concepts, uh, a full development of the, of the area, uh, no development and leave it as a linear park or a partial development with a linear park. Um, the residents at that time decided to do a uh, partial development with a linear park. And if you, if you look at the plan on the screen, that'll reflect exactly, um, what we thought that would envision. Um, and if you look even closer, if you look at the intersection of Hollis and Concord, you can see um, on the west side of Hollis Street, there is a parking area and then a small um, retail restaurant building located on that site that overlooks the linear park. This is the uh, proposed uh, restaurant plan. As you can see, the, the building, the front door is oriented towards uh, Concord Road. Um, so you'll be entering off Concord. There's a patio area on the, on the back side of the property, on the back side of the building, as well as a rooftop uh, dining area as well. And I'll, I'll show you that in the building elevations. The, the top elevation is the view you would see from Concord Road. Um, the bottom elevation is the is the elevation you'll see from uh, Hollis Street. Uh, the the top elevation is the view that you will see that overlooks the park, I guess, from the Vickery Hardware side over there. And then the the bottom elevation is is what backs up to the residence along uh, Dell Avenue. This is the property as it as it stands today, more or less. I think uh, the city has been working on adding some of the the sidewalks and paths through the park, and you may be able to see that in some of these pictures. These are the adjacent properties to the north, east, south, and west. With that being said, community development recommends approval of the rezoning from LC and GC uh, to mixed use conditional with the following conditions. Um, first one, all utilities within the development should be underground. Number two, no uh, debris may be buried on the subject property. Number three, uh, the developer should comply with the city's tree ordinance. Number four, all landscape plans must be prepared by a registered landscape architect. Number five, all common areas are to be landscaped and sodded. And then on to our special conditions. The, the development shall maintain the following setbacks. A front, side, and rear setback is zero. Um, basically, the footprint of the property is just outside the footprint of the building. So um, that is why these setbacks are, are essentially at zero. The next condition, um, there should be no bells, whistles, or outdoor paging systems permitted on site in conjunction with the restaurant. Uh, the restaurant use shall be permitted to have live music on site. Uh, the next uh, condition, any proposed dumpster shall be surrounded on three sides by brick or stucco uh, with an opaque gate on front. The lid of the dumpster shall be made of rubber. This is to minimize the noise impact of opening and closing that dumpster on the adjoining residence. Uh, the next condition, any utility boxes, HVAC components or accessory uh, components to the commercial building shall be screened from the public right away and adjoining property owners. Next condition, deliveries and trash pickups shall only be permitted between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, Next commission uh, stipulation, the developer shall install a directional sign that directs all trucks to enter and exit via Concord Road. 
we don't want trucks making a left hand turn out of the development and going on to Dell Avenue. Uh, the next condition is the commercial building shall have entry doors along Concord Road, which the plan reflects. And um, the next condition prohibits the following uses Automo automotive sales and repair, automobile wash, boarding and breeding kennels, dry cleaning plants, adult novelty stores and adult entertainment, pawn shops, check cashing stores, pool halls and arcades, service stations, coin operated laundry, composting facilities, funeral homes, group homes, shelter from the homeless and tattoo parlors. The next condition uh, basically gives approval of the subject property based on the site plan submitted with the with this zoning application. And finally, the last condition binds the applicant to the elevations re reflected in the uh, building elevation submitted with the zoning applications. Any changes to those elevations need approval from the community development director. With that I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Any, any questions? Do they have a name yet, Rusty? I believe it's Wade's place. It's Wade. Wade's, I'm sorry. Wade. Wade's. Say again. Wade's. W A D E. Ms. Harrington. Uh, yes, I have a couple questions about the noise ordinance. I know that we have some provisions already in there, but with the neighborhood so close behind and the fact that they're older homes, which typically don't have good insulation or no insulation and the windows are inferior, just being, able, being sure that the residents will be pleased as the years go by, because we're all happy to have a restaurant in the neighborhood, but how do you plan to maintain the noise levels? Is that directed at the, uh, at let's, the applicant? Let's, why don't you address it from your perspective and then we'll let the applicant speak to that when they get a chance. Um, well, the city's started to address that by planning an evergreen landscape buffer along that property line. In addition, we do have a noise ordinance that requires a, a certain decibel level at, at the property line. So if there's an issue, we'll, at that time, we'll go out there and measure the decibels and if there's a violation then we'll try to bring it into compliance okay we'll let the applicant address what measures they're going to take when they get up. Right. really quickly can you say what the decibel level is that the city has Uh, it's 65 decibel and then after uh in the evening it drops down to 60. 60 right That's what it's and 60 is basically um a conversation is how that's measured that'd be like like a general conversation like you'd be having so they'll be allowed to have at least one table at a time and <laughs> sorry i couldn't resist i'm sorry all right any other questions for mr martin no all right, thank you, Rusty. I appreciate that. At this time, we'd like to ask the applicant to come forward and tell us a little bit about uh, your plan, your restaurant, and you may have to answer some really stiff questions. I'll Welcome. do my best. Thank you very much. Thank you all for, for uh, hearing our case today. My name is Jason McClure. This is my partner, um, Jack Childress. Uh, we are the two sole owners of Wade's. Both of us come uh, from a sh professional chef background. Um, both of us have done fine dining for the majority of our career. Um, between the two of us, we have about 20 years of industry uh, background inside uh, the perimeter in Atlanta as well as in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, prior to this, uh, I was the owner of Villains uh, Restaurant in Midtown, um, uh, and I'm currently still the owner, or currently the owner of High Five Diner um, in Midtown. Uh, Wade's, so Smyrna has been a market that I have wanted to target for some time and began looking for an opportunity in 2014. I've been a resident of Smyrna uh, since uh, 2002, I believe. Um, it's getting a little fuzzy at this point. Um, but, uh, have, and, and now raising a family here. Um, uh, we're active members of the community. Um, uh, Mr. Childress is a member of the Vinings community and essentially a, a fellow resident. We won't hold the vinings against him. Um, but 
Um, like I said, I've been wanting to target Smyrna for a long time. I really believe in this community. And as you guys know, Smyrna is a complicated mix of limited real estate and, and, and certain areas where the visibility is just right for a restaurant. And wanting to do a restaurant that was a hybrid between fine dining and casual, which is what I think this market bears, um, we have a lot of families and we have a lot of uh, younger residents. So there's definitely a certain price point that you have to target and there's definitely a, uh, an ideal in mind. That being said, I think Smyrna is absolutely ready for uh, better cuisine. I feel like the market asks for it constantly and that's something that we want to bring. Um, Wade's by design. Uh, will be targeted to the 30 to 45 year old demographic with family. When the park uh, became available and when we realized that, that that was a vision that we could actually achieve, um, we became very passionate about that because who doesn't want to be able to have a meal in peace while their kids can play in the park for a little bit? Who doesn't want to be out on a sunny day? Who, after finishing a game at Smyrna Little League, doesn't want to be able to walk across the street and feed their family? Um, I think that it became an opportunity to not only create an amenity for the park, but the park became a direct amenity for the restaurant. I think they have a fantastic synergy. So as you sort of flesh out that demographic that we want to target, um, uh, we're going to do casual food. We are going to make it family friendly, but we are, um, like I said, we both come from a chef driven or fine dining background. Um, uh, and so everything we do will be scratch cooking. I think there's been a nice sort of test case already done with Porchlight for us where a true chef has come into the market and done both fine dining and casual food and had a lot of success. And I think when you look at him and you look at Muss and Turner's, I think you have a very good idea of the, the level of quality, the price point, and the idea that we'll be targeting for this restaurant. I, in addition, I think one thing that Smyrna, the Smyrna City Limits proper don't have is uh, a good cocktail and craft beer program. And that's something that I hear a lot of people also would like. And while we're not trying to push a late night bar or a wild, you know, saloon by any stretch of the imagination, I think a nice Negroni or a craft beer or a Belgium triple would be very much welcomed in this market. Um, as I, uh, as <clears throat> Mr. Martin stated, um, uh, we focused heavily on the outdoor portions of this restaurant. We have a thousand square foot patio that actually directly feeds into the park, and we have an additional 500 square foot um, upstairs patio. And while we won't segregate it by age, the intention is to drive the families downstairs and to drive um, uh, the uh, older um, or you know, customers without children upstairs and to sell that a little bit more as a bar, a comfortable outdoor you know, bar. Um, uh, the restaurant's actually develop, or, um, designed to be split into four, to be conceptualized in four segments with the indoor bar, the indoor dining area, the downstairs patio, and the upstairs patio so that we can do buyouts um, and we can compartmentalize the restaurant so that all four rooms can be, you know, used in different manners if we want to break them up for events, for um, zoning commission, you know, uh, gatherings. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, we're really happy with the way the design came out for this. Um, we hired, uh, Katrina Evans of e, e Architecture out of Athens. Um, she's done a number of restaurants in the market. She actually, I came to know her. She worked closely with my partner, uh, uh, Alex Brownstein at my former restaurant who does, uh, uh, grindhouse killer burgers. And they've now got five locations across Atlanta. They've been very successful. Um, but she's done a much softer take on on that design and it, the unfortunately the the renderings there don't do it justice but the design will be all whitewashed brick with um uh, I, with a dark iron uh window uh, sorry like window treatments um a very classical look very much in keeping with uh the city's architecture um the red cardinal that you saw on that one picture is actually not red um the cardinal incidentally is wade is my father and the cardinal is a reference uh to my deceased father we actually believe he comes back and visits us as a cardinal and so the logo of course was self-evident the cardinal that's on that side wall will actually be just a stencil of the bricks that we won't whitewash in the shape of a cardinal 
um, which we thought was a really fun accent point to the whole look. Very cool. Um, that's basically my sales pitch. I'm more than happy to take any questions. I'd like to open the floor to questions this time. Mr. Roberts. Yes, they had, they had asked some questions about the noise before. Uh, I know Rusty did a good job of answering, but from, from your perspective, how are you going to handle live music and that kind of? Um, absolutely. So obviously in the characterization of, of who we're targeting, we're not going to run rock and roll bands on the back porch. My vision for the occasional live music, which I don't foresee being a frequent item, um, uh, is, you know, a, a guy with a guitar, an acoustical guitar sitting on the porch, um, uh, you know, very light. Um, uh, we, uh, I do not believe so. No. Um, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to shut the door on that by any stretch of the imagination, but, uh, you know, right now I'd like to develop the community of the restaurant without putting additional like distractions in. And I think sometimes, especially when you're grounding yourself and developing a concept. I feel like becoming a music bar pigeonholes you into, uh, what's the, the bar that's down in Vinings across from Jubilee that's been there forever? Old Vinings Inn. I think you end up pigeoning yourself into a place that people only go on Friday and Saturday nights to listen to a live band. And that's not what I'm targeting at all. Um, I mean, obviously we're gonna have to manage ourselves to some degree with uh, crowds at night on Friday and Saturday evenings at 10 o'clock and just make sure that um, uh, we're managing everyone's expectations and we're serving people appropriately and we're controlling the outcome um, uh, well in advance of becoming a concern for the residents. What are um, our uh, weekday hours of operations, um, currently in current tension is to be 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday till midnight. Any other questions? Do you have a target opening date? Um, we're in permitting currently. Uh, so obviously that we are, we have selected a builder. We're prepared to dig. He's ready to put a shovel in the ground once uh, we get through permitting. Um, current estimate is five months. Uh, I, I'm not buying it. Um, I would love that to be true, but uh, things are going to happen. We are targeting end of November, 2016. I firmly believe that we will be open beginning of January, uh, 2016. Okay. I think Ms. Warren had another question for you. Um, because you are so close to the park and you mentioned that that was a big factor for you. Do you have any plans to <clears throat> support the city in their efforts to, um, you know, put in the play equipment or keep the park, um, you know, in a good state or good place? Is that any part of your, your um, concept? That's actually a bit of a complicated relationship. Um, and, and truthfully, I think to some degree, Tom would need to help me speak to the relationship, but the purchase price of the property has all gone back into the development of the park. Um, and the park is SPLOS funded. So there is a very specific relationship about how every, um, uh, everything can, can be managed. Um, that, you know, that being said, I would have no intention of, of personally putting in, um, say for instance, Playscape, because I don't want to manage the liability for it. Um, but we will obviously have a very direct relationship with that park. And our goal is to not only, you know, to maintain it and to be good neighbors, but to be good hosts and to utilize that park to develop it as another community venue. And I think in that endeavor, we will be very beneficial, whether we're doing, you know, daytime events or, I mean, there's, there's so much room as Zuka and Atkins have already demonstrated for community events in these open environments. And I think that that's, we're really, we're really going to shine and it will be an opportunity for us. And we do want to be a give back member of this community. Those events, especially will be a real opportunity to be a give back member. Uh, and, my wife is also connected. She's a speech therapist at Nick and Jack. We're very interconnected with the schools. Our goal is to sponsor, you know, I've already talked with King Springs. I've already talked with Nick and Jack. Our goal is to be very uh, uh, integrated into the educational community in, in Smyrna, because I believe that, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be so important for where the city goes over the next 20 years. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to uh, 
open the floor. This is a public hearing. If there's anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this application, now is your time. All right. Let the record show that there is no public comment. All right. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion. This is in Mrs. Warren's ward. We have a motion to approve, if you would. This one? You read that, yeah. Motion to approve um, zoning request Z16007, rezoning from LC and GC to MU conditional for the development of a new restaurant. Land lot 452 at Concord Road and Hollis Street in Smyrna uh, for the Smyrna Restaurant Concepts, LLC. And that is a motion to approve. Do we have a second? We have a second, Mr. Rice. At this time, please vote. We have we have a approval, 7-0. Good luck, guys, on your restaurant. Look forward to uh, seeing it flourish for sure. And... Um, forgive us. We have Miss Warren's new to our our panel, and that uh, I think that's the first time in my tenure that a brand new uh, ward member had to open with a uh, their own K their own application. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, no worries, no worries. We won't make fun of you long here. But I like the 007 case. That was nice. All right. Don't make me gavel you people. The next item on our agenda is Z16-005. This is approval of a special land use permit for the use of a modular classroom building, uh, 8.83 acres at land lot 595, 596, and 597. This is 3130 Atlanta Road. Covenant Christian School is the applicant. Uh, Mr. Martin, the background, please. Yes, um, this is a request this board has heard numerous times over the last uh, eight years. Um, basically hearing this request for every two years since 2008. Um, Covenant Christian School is requesting basically a renewal of their special land use permit to be able to maintain their um, modular classroom building on site. Um, this classroom building houses four uh, different classrooms for the school. Um, originally our Originally, mayor and council approved this zoning back in 2008. We've sub subsequently reapproved that every two years because during that original approval, uh, staff required a stipulation that they had to come back and get reapproved every two years. Um, with that being said, uh, I'll give you a picture of, of what the building looks like today. It looks great. It blends in with the school very well. Um, but staff is recommending approval of the requested uh, classroom building with following condition. This is the same condition that we've used every year. Uh, the module building shall only be allowed for a period of 24 months after that date of approval. If the applicant shall need the, the modular building for a longer period of time, the applicant shall reapply for approval for the modular building. This is just to maintain an action and open discussion with the school if we identify any issues that we need to be resolved we can we can address those issues when this comes back before the mayor and council um you know some of those issues may be site access they've changed the way they're dropping kids off we may need to address that or whatever the, those are types of things that we can address at that point but as I said before, we're we're recommending approval with this okay. stipulation. Any questions for Mr. Martin? Okay, thank you. All right, at this time, I'd like to uh, invite the applicant up to tell us a little bit about the application and the plans going forward. And welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Please state your name and address. Uh, Brant Suddeth, 3243 Collier Gate Court, Smyrna, 30080. A little close to the uh, property, huh? Yes. So I, <laughs> so I look at this property with the eyes of the uh, board chairman, but also as a, uh, as a neighbor. So it's Very important good. to me that it also looks right. Well, welcome. Tell Thank us a little bit about your plans. 
So uh, the last time we stood in front of you asking for approval, um, we had just completed a site plan with an architect uh, for the uh, for the church and the school. Um, so that was that was June of fourteen. Um, you know, since then, a couple things have happened. I think worth worth noting. Um, we've hired a development director. The school has. Uh, we we hired her in uh, November of fourteen. Um, we have uh, we have also uh, we still have a just over two hundred thousand dollars in our building fund. Um, part phase one of the plan the architect created for us was taking the, the uh, not the modular not touching the modular building but the, the the church building and moving church offices with with school offices such and classrooms such that we put the church offices all now sit on the front side of the Atlanta Road. Um, near the portico, closer to the park. And everything, if you're looking at it from Atlanta Road, on the right side is church offices and, uh, sorry, school offices and school classrooms. Phase two would be to remove the modular buildings, build out from um, kind of the right side of the building, again, if you're looking at it from Atlanta Road, such that extending that um, two levels back so that we have classrooms back there. And maybe the third phase would be coming closing the back area such that we had a, a gym. That's the one of the big things we're lacking is a gym and a cafeteria. So uh, uh, the exciting news from our standpoint was we've completed phase one of the renovation, um, and that was that was to the tune of about two hundred thousand dollars last year to do to do the move and um, kind of renovate the space, church and school. Uh, development director again. She's been on board now for a little over 18 months. We've raised our annual fund giving from $50,000 last year to $80,000 this year. Um, we repainted the annex um, as part of the renovations we did uh, in the fall of 2015 to ensure that it mirrored the color scheme of, of, the, um, of the church. Um, quite honestly, most folks don't realize it's a modular building. We've done, we've done a good job with it over the history with the landscaping and the painting. Um, so we, you know, our, our, again, our, our goal is to get to um, phase two and phase three of, of, our, of, our, of our long term um, process. Uh, so capital campaigning will start in the next coming year to start raising additional funds for for more site work. Um, but we just asked for another two years uh, uh, with uh, for use of, of these modular buildings. OK. Are there any questions? Yeah. Mr. Campo. Uh, last or two years ago, when you were up here, you were you mentioned you had you were establishing an endowment fund, and you had had I don't know a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in it, and you mentioned that's one of your major projects was to build the endowment. My question is, that everything seems to be predicated on dollars raised. Yes, sir. Um, how are you doing in uh, increasing these, your, you know, the endowment fund at this point? Yes, sir. So great question. So two years ago, we had about two hundred thousand dollars in the building fund. We've got two hundred thousand today because anything we we raised between uh, within the last twenty four months went to the renovations we did last year. Um, but with the development director that we now have on board, um, we started to build this community of giving um, and and the goal is you know I, I think and I'm not a development director but you've got to create a little bit of history of giving before you can go out and ask folks outside you know parents and grandparents and church members to give and so the hope is to show just continued the goal for this next year's giving is just over hundred thousand dollars so if we show some history of continued growth then the hope is as we reach out to folks in the community corporations that there's an opportunity to raise more money there so we speed our, our ourselves up along the path any other questions is there a magic button number that you guys are waiting on to hit and do you have an expectation of when that might be or no, I, I tell you, it's been a uh, it's been a it's been a year of transition there on the corner. Uh, SBC uh, Smyrna Presbyterian just hired a new pastor. Um, we just a month ago hired a new headmaster. Um, so uh, I think both organizations who work real closely together are excited about new leadership. And there's an opportunity, I think, on the corner of you know kind of Maine and Maine to do do a lot of exciting things there. But there was a, a little bit of a hit of a pause, uh, put things on pause this year, quite honestly, to just 
get new leadership in place. So um, the number I think for the renovations is at times it will depend on is it building out the school classrooms or is it getting the gymnatorium that we all want. Um, we're, it's in the ballpark of a million and a half, two million dollars to do it the way we want to do it. Right. Um, there may be a point where you got to scale it back and say, do it a different way. But right. that's the that's the goal. All right. Very good. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to open the floor. This is a public hearing. If there's anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this application, now is your time. Uh, let the record show there is no public comment. All right. This time, I'd like to entertain a motion. This is Mr. Campos Ward. I would like to request Z16005 approval of a special land use permit for the use of modular classroom buildings for the Covenant Christian School. I make a motion to approve the zoning request. We have a motion to approve, Mr. Campo. We have a second, Ms. Harrington. All in favor or oppose, vote your heart. It, it is approved 7 0. All right, thank you very much and good luck with your uh, fundraising efforts. Hey, we lost the Braves kid? No, no, no. There was a, there was a, we lost him. We bored him. No, he was a reporter. He was a, he interviewed us. No. Well, he interviewed the restaurant guys. Gotcha. No, never mind. Sorry. That stinks. All right. So the next item on the agenda is a preliminary discussion on the potential text amendments related to the Braves Stadium. Um, we have a special guest, Mr. Martin. Are you going to say anything first, or we just want to? Oh, Mr. Sudworth, you're going to come and introduce our special guest. I am. Um, I have asked Dana Johnson, and I. I want to publicly thank uh, Dana for coming tonight, giving up a part of his evening um, to talk about what Cobb County has done with regard to the Braves and the development of, of SunTrust Park and the Battery and some of the text amendments that they had. Upstairs during our uh, pre-meeting, uh, he gave us a quick history on the mixed use, the tailgating, the peddlers, and I believe we had covered the special event parking. Uh, there's uh, three or four other um, uh, text amendments that are out there. I'd like you to you know, maybe start with the uh, ticket brokers, I guess, is, is where we left off uh, and finish out that. And then we can just sort of have a general discussion with that. Again, thank you for being here, Dana. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, for Mr. 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 Chairman, for letting me speak. Uh, again, my name is Dana Johnson. I'm the Community Development Director for Cobb County, and I appreciate you allowing me to be here to um, talk a little about these codes. Before I go into exactly what you're talking about, I think there was one important um, mention on the, all of these codes. None of these codes were actually placed in our zoning ordinance either. All, most of these codes were placed in our section for permits and licenses with a few in the offenses section of the county ordinance. So just if so that was just as we were doing research on it, we saw that most of these were more permit and business license related than uh, say zoning related um, just as a point of thought as, as you're thinking about these yourselves um, to follow up. Uh, yes, ticket broker was the next one that we um, considered. This is commonly known as scalping, um, but ticket brokers are allowed through the state law. And basically what we did is we took state law and brought it down into the county ordinance with one exception addition that we added that is different from state law. And that is the lo location of ticket brokers. We have a requirement here that they be in a building that contains a CO. We did not want to have a situation where we had people on the side of the street with flip tables or tents or whatnot doing uh, ticket brokering in that type of environment. We don't have a problem. It's a legal use here in the state of Georgia, and but we wanted to make sure it happened within the confines of a building rather than out on the street or something like that. So that's the one change that we did that was different from state law. Dana, you may want to 
just throw out exactly what does state law allow with regard to ticket brokerage? Very good. Um, basically, in the state law, um, you have a prohibition zone of an area where you cannot do um, you cannot do your work as a ticket broker. Uh, and the state law says that for a venue which admits more than 15,000 people to a single ticketed event, um, that the distance is 2,700 feet from the event venue. So that's a little more than a half mile. Um, outside of that, um, there are also there are also provisions for um, repurchasing of tickets. So let's say I, as a Dana Johnson, go and I, I get a ticket to a game, and I just want to go and resell my ticket because my buddy who's going to come with me wasn't able to make it. Um, those same distance requirements uh, are there, for as, but I don't have to go through any of the criteria that a licensed broker would need to go through. I could just go to somebody and say, face value ticket, here you go, and, and that transaction can occur anywhere because the state law really deals with the upcharge that happens on a ticket price so that they're not gouging people. Um, one big flaw in the state law, and it's not something we tackled in here because the state has not tackled this yet, is the whole internet stub hub type of um, business that's happening now where most of it's happening over the internet and not um, by people on the street, and that's not something the state law touches, so it's not something that we addressed either. We really tried to stay c contained within the confines of what the law allows. Um, there are some things in here about background checks and other items that are contained in the state law. We did not incorporate that into our ordinance since it's already contained in the provisions of state law, and they would need to get their state permit before they came to us to get any county permit. Uh, moving on from there, we also did a, this this one is actually, the version you have in front of you is an old version of this code. This is for unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones. Uh, because the stadium in Smyrna and Marietta are within flight paths of Dobbins Air Reserve Base, we're being very careful that what we're allowing on there is not going to cause flight navigational uh, difficulties for our men and women in uniform. Uh, so therefore, we, we have put together a, a variant draft on this code than what is contained here, and I'll be getting that to Ken shortly so he can ta be taking a look at that as well. But um, basically, we want to make sure with the, the new version that we'll be bringing forward shortly uh, is that anyone who is operating a drone is doing so within the guidelines of the FAA. Um, basically, if you run a drone, you are supposed to have a pilot's license. Uh, and as such, follow all of the FAA regulations. It is considered a plane just like an F-35. Um, so we're just trying to make sure that those uh, drones that are going to be used for these purposes are uh, meet those particular standards. And we also, within this, have a um, one-mile buffer, but it's not for flight of a drone. It's for takeoff and landing of the drone. Once a drone is in the air, it is covered by FAA regulations, and they're really the county cannot supersede FAA regulations as it relates to air navigability. But the FAA is silent as it relates to the takeoff and landing locations of, of these particular devices. And that is where the county has come in and said, with outside of some exclusions like Lockheed and Dobbins and the Georgia Tech Research Institute and uh, public safety and emergency um, emergency medical issues that we're going to have um, this um, one mile restriction from takeoff and landing of these particular devices. The last code that we considered um, was a code dealing with um, solicitation and distribution of materials in public right of ways. Um, this is a code that we had to be very careful on because the Supreme Court has made many, um, many proclamations as it related to solicitation and distribution uh, in public spaces. And uh, the only way that we, through our research, found that it would be legal to do that was to uh, have it 
contained within an area of safety to make sure that people's safety was being upheld. That's why we added the solicitation and distribution ordinance when an individual walks into a public right-of-way in order to do their solicitation and distribution. That is a clear public safety issue for both the individual themselves as well as for anyone who's in a motor vehicle or, or transit vehicle or, 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 or bicycle on the roadway. So as such, we thought this was a public safety issue that we could address in a, in, in a legal manner allowed by the courts. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to answer any questions for your board, sir. Do we have any questions for Mr. Johnson? Mr. Monroe. Um, I just want to ask about um, uh, transportation, and I think this is probably more for us, but if a downtown restaurant or somebody decides to be a transportation be hired or operate their own to and from, has Cobb County addressed any of that for inside Cobb County? No, sir, and, and none of that would be addressed by any of the codes that we've addressed, and we would certainly welcome and support growing Smyrna's business community, which is really what that would do is, is help drive business into downtown Smyrna, and we would welcome and support it. Any other questions? Mr. Sedrith, you want to? Yeah, just to remind everybody, um, Dana's covered a lot uh, in, in a very uh, general fashion. We'll get into the specifics. I will bring these to you one at a time. My goal is to have all of this addressed by the end of the year. Um, but there's not a particular time frame that we're going to address, you know, peddlers as an example. It, it, staff will go through this. We'll continue working with Dana. And when we're comfortable that we, one, completely understand it, and two, uh, have, have uh, the wording uh, is comfortable to us and we are, are putting it in the correct ordinance, <coughs> oh, excuse me, we will bring that to you. So you may have back-to-back -back meetings with something or you may have um, two meetings where we don't talk about it and then we talk about it on the third meeting. Um, <clears throat> but we will have these addressed. Uh, again, Cobb has asked us to look at these. Um, some of their requirements, obviously, um, you know, and some of the restrictions that they have, obviously there's property that's still in Cobb County that's a half a mile from the stadium. We'll clarify exactly where that measuring point starts uh, so that we're consistent. Um, but obviously some of that may come into Smyrna and that's why we're taking a look at it to see if we want to join them uh, with some of the, some of those restrictions. I, I would also, um, since I handed out uh, uh, an, an older version, but still it gives you the intent that if you all have any questions about it, to contact, you know, Joey or Rusty or myself in an email and just say, hey, what about this? Uh, or if you have another thought, even like David's thought, that may not be directly related to this amendment, uh, but it's something you'd like to know, again, let us know by email or give us a phone call on that, and we'll be happy to uh, bring that into the discussion as well. Um, that's all I have on this uh, subject. Again, thank you, Dana, for being here. Um, I'm not going to say I won't call you back and ask for your assistance in the future, but Thank you for giving us part of your night tonight. We're, we're happy to help. I think Ms. Warren's got one question, guys. Uh, and this wasn't really mentioned, but it made me think of um, Uber and other traffic or ride sharing services. I don't know if it's the county or if it's the Braves and the Battery and what they've decided. Is there going to be a specific area of traffic for drop off and pickups? or what we used to call taxi stands? Yeah, th that is really covered by the state now. The okay. state has changed their rules for taxi cabs and taxi cabs and Uber based upon the state law are supposed to be on a more even playing field. Actually, since the state has changed their taxi cab ordinance, the county has actually totally deregulated taxis in the county because there's no longer really any avenue for us to regulate taxis. So we, we just kind of followed the state's lead and, and just deregulated it completely. 
So now it's only regulated by the state. So you don't require in their development to um, offer some sort of loading and unloading area for those? Like, So Ubers can be picking up and dropping off all over the area? or they're, they're, It'll be different on game day versus non-game days to, to make it more Everything confusing. Everything will be. <laughs> because on non-game days when the battery is just a mixed-use development with restaurants and entertainment and things like that, the, it'll be just like any other downtown area where Uber and taxi can operate freely. Um, during game days, everything will change, and there will be very specified points for drop-off and loading for taxi cabs as well as buses and trolleys and any other type of device that can bring people from somewhere and bring them there. Yep. Uh, one right, question. Very now. good. Well, Mr. Johnson, thank you for taking time out of your... I'm sorry, I just, I just had a thought. Sir um, Roberts. Y'all, y'all did a good job pulling this together, but the research material, is, is there a specific city that you looked at when we were putting these together, or were there multiple cities? Or? We looked all over the place. All we, over the we place. Really, and we didn't restrict ourselves just to baseball stadiums. We looked at baseball, football, concert venues, our own state law, how others do it, to try to come up with what we thought was the best package of codes that could help address some of what we think could happen in the future. Mr. Johnson, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and uh, explain um, this information to us. Really appreciate that. And uh, we'd also like to take a minute to, I know we mentioned it earlier, welcome Ms. Warren, um, our new uh, Ward 3 representative. Um, and Mr. Sudrath, do you have anything else you'd like to add? We have not done the minutes. I'm, I'm still, I've, I've still got the gavel over here. I'm just making sure we don't have anything, anything further. Okay. All right. Uh, without any further business, um, I'd like to declare this meeting adjourned at seven six six. I didn't approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'm losing. I'm losing. I got. I'm sorry. Dear God, someone gaveled me. The last item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from the May 9th, 2016 meeting. Are the board members in possession of the minutes? Does anybody have any changes they would like to make at this time? No. All right, can we get a vote, a vote to approve the minutes? I move Mr. Roberts to approve. Uh, second, Mr. Campo. Uh, all in favor, please vote. They are approved 7-0, and uh, without any further business, this meeting is adjourned at 6.54. Next time, I'll turn off my mic.